Saturday the uh, 13th of May and uh, we are leaving Asti Palia and heading to Santorini. Uh, depending how our day goes, we may stop at the island before that, but we're hoping to go all the way. So it's goodbye to Asti Palia. Although we had another sunrise at sea, it was still freezing cold. 10.30 on uh, Saturday the 13th of May and we've uh, reached the island of Anuthi and it always says it looks like somebody just chopped off the end of this island and took it somewhere. Um, obviously we had an awful lot of wind as we came uh, to this um, side of the island uh, but we were ready for it, we were reefed down and uh, I'll just pan around so you can see the rest of it. There you go. And then right up on the top, looks like there is a church. Anyway, we're hoping to continue on um, to Santorini. It has been a bit of a rough ride. The weather didn't moderate as it was forecast to do. So we've been in basically anything from 15 to 25 knots of wind. Um, but we had double reef in the main and anything from a full Genoa to a triple reef Genoa. It just depended on what the wind speed was. But anyway, onwards we go. So this is the uh, little town right on top of the hill and uh, coming down the hillside. It's actually very picturesque. Being on a beat is never a particularly pleasant sail but the swell on the beam made it more uncomfortable. It had been a while since we had water hitting the top sides and splashing over into the cockpit, and we hadn't used our third reef in the mainsail since our passage from Samoa to Tonga when we had to divert to Nuitapu. We were definitely grateful for the relief in the lee of Analfi as we sailed on by. So it's just after one o'clock in the afternoon on uh, the 13th of May, and uh, we are approaching Santorini. Turn around. There seems to be a lot more settlements on this island, so we're going to find out. It's fair to say neither of us was too impressed by what we saw of Santorini initially, but that soon changed. First delight was discovering a dinghy dock offered by the Dolphins Fish Taverna. The host was also kind enough to give us the lay of the land, so to speak, with regards to a bus schedule, the closest bus stop, and the touristy highlights of the area. So we made it to Santorini and we've we've come ashore to the the Dolphin uh, restaurant and we are enjoying some sundowners. Four four is anchored out in the bay. And uh, we're gonna have some dinner as well. We had a long day of sailing in fairly unpleasant conditions to be honest, but we made it. Armed with the new information we received from the host, after a delicious dinner, we walked along the cliff tops to the Red Beach, passing the church of Agios Nicolas along the way and finding a beautiful beach lapped by crystal clear water. Then while Roy walked to find the bus stop, Elaine watched a farmer till the soil of his restaurant's vegetable garden. With the sun dropping behind the mountain and casting sunlight over the fields, it was a picture perfect sight to behold. This is on Santorini. We've come for a walk this evening. We're down to the Red Beach and uh, just watching this guy turn over his soil. Turn around and see his garden. After a quick breakfast on board the following morning, we dinghied ashore and enjoyed the short walk to the one and only bus stop in Akrotiri, discovering along the way that Akrotiri is in fact a prehistoric settlement famous for its caves and of course the Red Beach. We eventually had an explanation for the strange looking coastline and all the buildings we had seen built into the rock face. Given that we had decided to catch the first bus into Thera, we were the only ones at the bus stop, but what a treat we were in for. As soon as we left the outskirts of Akrotiri, the landscape changed completely and for as far as the eye could see, there were rolling hills cultivated with vineyards. Learning that Santorini Island produces its own Santo wine, 
a wine I'd enjoyed with my dinner the previous night at the taverna but hadn't realised. The contrast of the green vineyards against the backdrop of the deep blue Mediterranean Sea, flanked by the sea cliffs dotted with white country homes, produced absolutely spectacular scenery. Reaching the city centre, our first stop was to find the main square and from there the port police to clear in. Fortunately, Roy had a much more pleasant experience with this officer, but he wanted to know the minute details of our sailing itinerary through Greece, which we both found rather bizarre. With the paperwork stamped, we were free to explore, starting with a walk along the cliff edge to the Three Bells of Fiera, enjoying magnificent views out over the Mediterranean Sea and the Santorini Old Harbour, hundreds of metres below us, as well as along the cliffs where the numerous white buildings for which Santorini is famous for clung to the cliff edge. Famous sites we passed as we strolled along included the Cathedral of St. John the Baptist, the Catholic Church of St. Stalianos, and the Catholic Church of Kiyomisi Tistheotoko. Definitely sure I'm not pronouncing those correctly, but hey-ho. Morning coffee and the most decadent chocolate pancakes were enjoyed at the Falcon on the Rocks restaurant, savouring not only our pancakes but the fabulous views. By noon we were back on the bus returning to Akrotera and not a minute too soon. The thousands of cruise ship guests had started to arrive in droves, but we'd had a wonderful morning full of unexpected treasures. Back on board, we weighed anchor and set sail for Foligondros Island, taking advantage of the calm weather to continue west, and by 1800 that evening, we were safely anchored in our chosen anchorage for the night, with five other yachts for company.